In this tutorial, we'll walk through the process of creating custom external threads using FreeCAD. We'll be using the Part Design Workbench along with the Additive Helix and Pipe Operation. While FreeCAD does offer some thread presets in the Part Design using the whole operation, there are cases where you may need full control over the thread profile, pitch and placement such as designing non-standard threads. We'll start by building a base shaft by using a part design operation for revolving a sketch, then create a custom triangle thread profile and apply it along a path in the form of a helix. This tutorial will also cover adding the lead in and lead out features to improve the thread engagement. So let's start our modeling in FreeCAD's part design workbench. If you like what you see and you want to donate to the channel, then you can do so via Ko-Fi or Coffee at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G-0 or via PayPal at paypal.com forward slash paypal me forward slash Darren B. E. Stone. I also run a Patreon where you can get early access and additional content. And that's at patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Links can be found in the channel header on the about page or in the descriptions of these videos. So I'm in FreeCAD, I'm going to start a new document and I'm in the part design workbench. Let's create the shaft for the thread. Let's create a new body, a new sketch that I'm going to place on the XZ plane. So we're tackling the object from the side. I want to revolve a profile around this axis. We'll sketch the side profile using the polyline. I want the radius of my shaft at 20 millimeters. So we move across around about minus 20 and we start sketching. So I'm going to sketch one skin of the profile to start with. Right click to cancel, right click to cancel again to get the mouse pointer back. And I can start dimensioning using the dimensioning tool. So that's set some distance away from the center point. I can select the axis if I wanted to. And we set that to 20 millimeters. Again with the dimension tool, that set the length of the shaft. And this is going to be 15 millimeters. And now I can set this length to five millimeters and this height to 12 millimeters. Let's right click to cancel and neaten up our constraints. So far we've got the outer, let's create another polyline connect up to the top point and we could use an offset but I'm just going to sketch in roughly the inner skin and then right click to cancel. Neaten up with horizontal and vertical constraints any ones that we've missed. It's only one. Now I can set some distance this one but I'm going to select the dimension tool first and set a distance here of two millimeters. And then distance between these two points of two millimeters as well. Now with the dimensioning tool, we can go through the modes. I'm going to take this one and this one is over constrained at the moment. If I hit M on the keyboard, I've now made those equal. You can use the equality constraint instead if you want to. So M cycles through the modes. We left click to accept and let's right click, get the mouse pointer back. So we're fully constrained. We can neaten these up if we wanted to. And I'm going to hit close. Let's view and toggle axis cross. So this is going to revolve around here. Click the sketch and then use the revolve revolved around that center point and then hit OK. Now I've created our revolve. We can look at adding a thread. I'm going to make sure nothing's selected and then create a new sketch along the XZ plane. If I use the section view and zoom in, I can get to the left hand side where I'll create the thread. And we'll pull in some geometry. So let's use the create external geometry tool and pull in this line. I'm looking to create the profile of the thread, the same as I created the profile of the revolve. Right click to cancel, 
profile of the thread I'm going to create using the polyline is a simple triangle. And I'm constraining coincident to the point and coincident to that line or point on object constraint and coincident back to the starting point. Right click to cancel and again to cancel the tool. And we'll make all of these equal. Now the pitch of the thread is going to be the same as the height of the profile. So I'll select this line here, the dimension tool. I can drop a height in and set this to three millimeters for a three mil thread. I've now created the profile. I can hit close and now I can make sure the sketch is selected, which it is. And if we look to the top, we have this option here, the additive helix. Also on part design, create an additive feature and additive helix. When we select that, our thread is added and we've got the options on the left. So this is where we refer back to our original sketch. So the mode, I'm going to leave as pitch height angle. We'll come to the pitch in a moment. Let's concentrate on the height. Remembering back to the sketch, this height would be the 15 millimeters of that shaft minus the pitch height. So we have the 15 millimeters and then minus the three millimeters or 12 millimeters. It's already taken effect and you can see it's gone all the way to the top. Let's go back to the pitch. Now there's a small caveat with this one. If I wanted a three millimeter pitch, the height of this thread is three millimeters. If I click, you can see nothing's happened. If I go lower, two millimeters, we're fine. Go higher, we're fine. What we have to do is something very similar to fillets. The three millimeters will mean that these edges, these two here within this value will touch. If I back this off slightly to say 3.01, then this is not sharing an edge. We zoom in, we can see a little gap in here. We have left-handed, if we wanted to go left-handed with the thread and reverse. So you can see the relation between the profile height and also the height of the shaft minus the profile height as well. And we can link these to an expression if we wanted to. So back in our sketch, we can name that constraint and then reference that, the value of that in here. For more accuracy, I would say if I wanted a three millimeter pitch in here, let's set this to three millimeters and it's going to fail if I hit okay, we get an error. But if I okay that, and instead of canceling out, come to the model, come into the additive helix, which is currently in error, select the sketch. And if we look down to the constraints, open this up, we've got a three millimeter constraint. That set this to 2.99 millimeters and click off and come back to the task. If I hit refresh now, you see that there was a change and that sketch has been applied. So now I have three millimeters, I hit okay that's applied and we're all set to go. So now we have a proper three millimeter thread and our profile has just been backed off a bit to allow for a very small gap to save the problem with the edges intersecting. So we've created our helix thread, but we need some lead in and lead out so it meshes easily with the mating thread. To do this, we'll create a sketch that follows the projection of this edge and use it to create a pipe along that path. Let's first create the sketch. Make sure nothing's selected. So we create a sketch along the XY plane of the body. We use the section view and then use the arc by three points. Connect up to the center of origin and sketch the arc making sure we don't constrain to anything else. This may look odd, but we're going to use attachment mode to connect the sketch properly. Let's hit close. 
So the path at the moment is sitting here. This is the point of origin. So if I come out to view and toggle axis cross, we can see the point of origin there. Let's take the sketch and change the map mode. At the moment, it's flat face on that plane, the XY plane, and select the button on the end after clicking in the field. We see that the XY plane is the first reference. So select the button, so it's saying selecting. And we want to move this point, the origin of the sketch, to this vertex. So click the vertex. It now follows that edge. But if you notice, if we look to the left, the projection isn't right. So you can see it's raised up. So we want to follow this projection. To follow that projection, all we do is use reference two, click on the edge of the thread, and then we can use the map mode offsets to place this in the correct position. If we move one, we can see which way we need to go. So I need to go minus 90 along the X. It's going this way. I could come out and resketch this if I want, but if I try the Z, we can see we need 180 degrees around the Z. So now, if I look to the left, you can see the projection of this sketch is following that thread. So that's our path connected. The next thing we need is a profile to follow this path. We're just going to use the face of the thread. Before we do that, let's go in and edit the sketch now. And I'm going to take the sketch. We need to keep some tangency between this edge so the thread meshes correctly. So take the center point and the axis and use a coincident constraint. That is tangent now. And now we can take the end and circle this inwards so it embeds into the side wall of the thread. Let's hit close. So we can see that in there. It may come out the other side, but we'll deal with that in a moment. Next, we'll apply the pipe. First, click on the face of the thread, make sure that's selected, and control select our path, the sketch, and apply an additive pipe operation. You can see this is successful, but it's coming out the back, as you can see here. So we need to solve this. If we come over to the left, we have the orientation mode, which is standard. Let's drop this to fixed. So you can see this is now extended out this way. We can okay that. Then we can alter the path on the sketch. Let's bring this in to about here and hit close. So you can see now we just come out the back a little bit further and hit close again. If you want the thread it fully embedded in, we've got a number of options. We can follow this around a bit more to extend it. like so, or double click on the sketch. If we want a shorter one, because this is a steeper angle, it will start to come out the back. Then we need to clean this up. And you can do that with subshape binders. For that, let's find a stable operation. So the revolve, we've got a more simpler model. So attaching a subshape binder to say this circle here and add the subshape binder, it's much more stable than connecting to the pipe because you can see we have like this edge here will be split at this point. So it's much more complex, less chance of it failing if we connect it to the revolve instead. So now I can take the binder and create a pocket. We'll look inside. We can see what it's done. It's removed this feature here. It's just left a face in here, which is absolutely fine. That won't come out on fabrication. If we're worried about that, 
then we could say take the binder and set a small set a 0 0.01 and that removes that from there so I've taken small sliver away same with the top let's go back to the revolve much more simple face and create a binder on there one two come back to the pocket and press the space bar you can see where that binder is and we'll pocket I forgot to select the feature so let's cancel take the binder create a pocket and we can go reverse and again we've got this face upon here which is not a problem but if we wanted to we could go two dimensions and the second one we change this to something like 0.01 and hit OK. If the binder is visible, just hide it. And there we have the lead in. So I hope you enjoyed that video. I hope that gives you an idea of how to create custom threads and use the additive helix in the part design. Remember there's a subtractive helix as well that works in exactly the same way, except that it removes material rather than adds it. Hope you enjoyed the video and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. If you like what you see and you want to donate to the channel, then you can do so via Ko-Fi or Coffee at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G-0 or via PayPal at paypal.com forward slash PayPal me forward slash Darren B. E. Stone. I also run a Patreon where you can get early access and additional content. And that's at patreon.com forward slash Mango Jelly Solutions. Links can be found in the channel header on the about page or in the descriptions of these videos. I thank everybody that's donated so far. It really helps to keep the lights on so I can produce more content and also expand the channel. Thank you for liking, commenting and subscribing to these videos and I hope to see you again in the next one.